to Rolex. Ooh, fancy Rolex, whatever. What's up, people? So today, I'm gonna to talk about something that's kind of car related. It's uh, watches. And more specifically, Rolex, which I really don't want to talk about because now every troll in the world is going to be like, oh, you're flexing, you're fronting, you're about money. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not going to have that kind of conversation because that's stupid. But I have had a lot of young people out there who are mecha mechanical-minded geeks <laughs> notice watches that I've worn. And in particular, this one, which is a Rolex GMT Master II which is fancy talk for Greenwich Mean Time because it has a complication that tells you what Greenwich Mean Time is. And you can pull out the crown and click over the hour hand to different time zones in case you get on an airplane. But I wanted to bring this up and tell a story because Rolex, I think, is the most misunderstood watch for all car guys out there. It's something that's regarded as expensive and fashionable and mysterious. And yeah, other than expensive, it's not necessarily any of those things. <laughs> What's, but what's the origin of Rolex? What does it mean to me? Why the heck do I have one? Because truth be told, I used to hate Rolex with the fiery burning passion of a thousand suns and think anybody who ever got one was an idiot. But then one day I changed my mind. So one time ago, I grew up in a small town in Ohio and there's basically one jewelry store. And in that jewelry store with watches, and you know, I don't know what it is about guys uh, and boys, but we love mechanical things. We love cars, we love steam locomotives, airplanes, motorcycles, guns, watches, you know, all these sorts of things. Guys tend to be mechanically minded, you know, engineers. So watches, if you start to like them, there's something that guys really enjoy. Plus, we're dudes, we don't really get to do all kinds of crazy fashion things like women do, or wear jewelry or anything like that, so a watch is like all we get. So it kind of means a lot to a guy. And uh, so at this little jewelry store in my hometown, there was quartz movement watches, which were kind of cheaper, they're fashionable, they're fun. It might be something that's $100 or $200. Maybe the most expensive one might be five or $600. And uh, on that note, Rolexes are mechanical. Their movement and everything is powered by a spring. And they have little gears and little ruby bearings and all kinds of precise tolerant parts that click away to tell you time. A quartz movement watch is cheap to manufacture, it has a battery in it, it's electronic, and it's perfectly accurate. The funny truth of the matter is, a quartz watch that's decent is way more accurate than even the best mechanical watch such as Rolex, which is super expensive. So there is a question as to why and questioning all of us guys and people's sanity, which that's perfectly okay. <laughs> But anyway, so it's jewelry store. You know, things like Citizen, Timex, whatever, you could get those, they'd be fashionable, they're entry level, right? And then after a while, they got Tissot, which is a step up, and they had quartz movements and some more entry level automatic or mechanical movement watches. And Tissots are pretty good, they're pretty decent Swiss watches. And those things, I don't know what they range from, a few hundred dollars to maybe $2,000. Might be a real expensive Tissot. And uh, that particular jewelry store didn't have much in the way of that. But then there was this massive jump up they had to Rolex. Ooh, fancy Rolex, whatever. I don't even know what the price ranges are of the things anymore because I don't pay attention to it. But basically all you need to know about Rolex is they all kind of look the same. They have a few different bands. The Rolex people are going to get so mad at me right now. But they're sports watches that have evolved to be fancier. They have different metals, stainless steel, platinum, gold, rose gold, yellow gold, white gold, mother of pearl, different bezels, a couple different complications. Ooh, I have date, I don't have date. I'm ladies, I'm men's. They're not that, they're not that, they're not that super varied, okay? But Rolex is something that is absolutely iconic going way back when. Uh, if I'm, I could be mistaken here, but like one of the three manufacturers, top manufacturers of uh, watches in the world where they make everything. Uh, it's Rolex, Jaeger Lecoultre, and Patek Philippe. And Rolex is kind of like the durable sports watch that everybody knows. And as we all know, Rolex sponsors a bunch of sporting events around the world, higher end ones, races, things like that. You know, uh, it's pretty neat. But I hated them when I was a kid. Because they had these entry level watches that you might be able to afford and maybe a Tissot or two but then this giant jump up in price to these really expensive Rolexes. So everybody in my hometown, they just thought the only good watch in the world that everybody had to look up to to one day get was Rolex. Ooh. Uh, no. I just, I just thought it was so like, 
narrow-minded because Rolexes are sports watches. They're not even that varied in fashion or design. They don't look that fine. They're not really dress watches. They are nowadays because people have made them fashionable, but they're a sports watch. They're a rugged watch. And I thought that was silly. And then I would see people like, oh, I'm gonna get me a lot of money. I'm gonna get a Rolex. Yeah, Rolex going by for the... And then it was just like, anybody, they didn't know anything about watches and they go out and spend a bunch of money on this thing because they think it was cool. So all it meant to anybody was a status symbol. I thought that was so stupid. And I didn't even think they were good looking. And even if I did, I didn't like them anymore because of that. So I started, you know, I liked watches when I was younger, even when I was a little kid, like Swatch watches in the 80s. But I always liked the watches. I think they're really neat. But I hated Rolex. I hated it. I didn't want to look at it. So why am I wearing it? Well, years later, uh, and this is before Genius Garage and being married and having a life and trying to do things. So I had slightly more money. <laughs> I could do whatever I wanted with it back in the days. Um, and I had my shop, uh, race shop, and I was doing race cars and building and working on cars and being athletic and riding motorcycles and having a real active lifestyle. And my first really cool watch that was pretty decent was an Omega Speedmaster. Pretty nice watch, mechanical. I was really proud of that. It was a chronograph, so I had a stopwatch on it. But it was, uh, it was also um, very similar to the watch they wore when they went to space in the Apollo uh, missions. Uh, those, I think, had like a Velcro band. Mine was stainless steel. And uh, that watch had a plastic uh, or polymer type uh, crystal, the so-called window, you know what I mean, there, which would get scratched up really easy, which was annoying. Uh, and I had it for a long time, wore it out like crazy. Also, I bought it used really nice because if you buy a new watch, you're going to lose money hand over fist. It's called jewelry, massive markup. So tip to all my young car friends, buy a used watch that's really nice and refurbished, but make sure you're not getting a fake. Okay. You'll save a lot of money. <laughs> and, uh, I just made every jewelry store and watch manufacturer on the planet mad at me. I don't care. I, I care more about you guys. <laughs> So anyway, I had the Speedmaster, and one day at a race or something, I broke the crown off, the thing that wound it. I don't know how I did it. I don't even remember banging it on something. Just broke it off, it was gone. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I wasn't even being that hard on it. It's like, crap. So I had my old Tissot from way back when. Actually, I got it as a college graduation present. It was one of the few presents my parents got me, um, which is neat. And it was, uh, it was an automatic watch. It was an entry-level one. Uh, it wasn't anything too crazy, but it was cool. It was good looking. I worked to a few races and things. So I got it out of the dusty drawer or whatnot and wore that to the next race uh, when I was looking after some cars for a client. And it rained, deluge rain at Mid-Ohio, like it always seems to be the case in the summer. And um, my watch got full of water. I wasn't even swimming or anything. Nobody doused me, just from the rain. Must have made its way into the crown. Maybe the service wasn't done right or something like that. But you know, when a watch gets full of water, your wrist heats it up and then the coolest part is the crystal so it condenses and you're just like, you've gotta be kidding me. And for any watch, that's terrible getting water in it. So after that, I took it, had it serviced, cleaned out, everything like that. But I got to the point where I was like, this, this is stupid. Like I, I need a watch that can handle my lifestyle. So I started looking around and I wanted to find something rugged, something cool. Um, that I could wear underwater and never worry about getting, you know, uh, full of water or I wanted to be really waterproof. I wanted to be rugged. I wanted the crystal not to scratch. I didn't want to break off a crown and I wanted to be decent, good looking and have a little bit of a history. Cause you know, I like history and mechanical things. Call me a geek. And I looked and looked and looked. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh crap, that's like what a Rolex is. No. <laughs> and so I looked into it. And the watch I have uh, is a GMT Master II, stands for Greenwich Mean Time, has that complication. And you can switch the bezel over and quick look at it and tell like what your time zone is, which is kind of neat. And if you're on an airplane, you can just switch the, uh, the uh, hour hand over, and that's kind of cool. And so I got it. I bought it as a certified pre-owned, so I'd save a bunch of money versus something new. And it was perfect when I got it. Definitely not a fake, and perfect. Papers and everything like that. So I suggest that to people. Anyway, um, and it looked good and I enjoyed it, you know. Um, and the thing that's neat about that is, which I found, I still have it and I still wear it. I wear it the most of any watch I have. And the reason being is, it's the only watch I've ever had that can withstand my lifestyle. 
I've worn it working on cars, working on race cars. I've worn it in races. I've worn it leading businesses. It's been on Indianapolis Winter Circle. I've worn it in a fighter jet. I've worn it climbing the rigging of a tall ship in the Atlantic Ocean. It's been in oceans. It's been in the Pacific Ocean surfing. It's been the Atlantic. It's been in the Bay of Biscay. It's been in the North Sea. It's been all over everywhere. I've worn it outside. I've worn it you know, doing manual labor, racing, riding motorcycles, working on cars. And the other thing that's cool about it is, it's a sports watch. That's what they were back then. They were for people with an adventurous, rugged lifestyle, whether you're a diver or a pilot or a race car driver or whatever, that's what it was for. That's what a Rolex is intended for. But the reason they became expensive and fashionable and this object of like magical expense and social class is because Rolex marketed, I mean, they make a fine product. I mean, this thing is just badass. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Rolex or any jewelry store, so if I'm telling you this, you know it's true. Or at least that's my opinion. So they marketed the lifestyle to people because that's exciting for people. Because even if you can't have that lifestyle, you can have a little piece of it and feel cool and feel like you're connected to like Jacques Cousteau or Paul Newman or something cool like that or some fighter pilot, right? And that's fun. People like that. That's, that's the mental intrigue for men uh, with things like this. And it's all mechanical, so that's neat. It's a little fine precision machine. You listen to it, la la la, right? So that's exciting. And because they marketed it that way, it became a fashionable item and something that people look at positively, which is funny because you can wear it with a suit or you can wear it to a formal occasion. And the truth is, it's a sports watch. You shouldn't wear it to something like that. It's not fine enough or nice enough. It's a watch to go be rugged in and do stuff, you know? And people are like, well, mine's solid gold. Well, that's because you wanted to spend a lot of money on a sports watch and you want it to be shinier. But uh, it's kind of fun. So if you have one of these, you can go from working on a race car or a race, and then if you gotta rush home to go on a date, or go out with your wife or go to something fancy, you can just clean yourself up quick, throw on a suit, leave your watch on, and then people think it's socially acceptable for you to wear a sports watch or a work watch. <laughs> so if you see me wearing a suit or a sports jacket and I'm wearing a Rolex, I was being lazy or I'm traveling and don't want to take another watch um, because it's not, in my opinion, a really fine dress watch. I think um, fine dress watches are usually like a natural band and you know something like crocodile or alligator or whatnot. Um, and have real fine hands and movements, la la la. But that's just my own personal opinion. And actually, if you go way back when, people didn't wear wristwatches before kind of like the 19 teens and 1920s. They had pocket watches. So if you really want to be formal, or if I do, I don't even wear a wristwatch at all. I wear a pocket watch. <laughs> because you don't want some ugly thing banging around on your wrist if you're a man. Of course, that's, that is an old world kind of way of working it, but that's just the way I play it, so whatever. Um, so the reason I'm making this video, first of all, I'm pretty self-conscious about making this video right now because I think money is dumb. And I think the fact that Rolex has, has become like, a, what do you call that? A prestige or like a power thing to wear or a social class symbol. I think that's dumb too. Um, I just actually really like it uh, because it's been able to withstand my lifestyle. Even the crystal doesn't get scratched. It's pretty amazing. It really is. And then you wear it for five, ten years and beat it all up from doing all kinds of things, get great adventures, and when it's all ragged out, send it back to the manufacturer, they totally restore it, refurbish it, and it looks brand new, but it's still your watch. So that's pretty cool. And um, it's something I hope to have for the rest of my life and one day pass it on to a younger family member who hopefully cares. Or if I don't have a younger family member, then I'll probably give it to a student who really cares or something. Because it's a compliment to life. It's something that, I don't know, symbolically, I just feel it represents all the great adventures I've had with it and what I've done. And so it's, it's a companion to that adventurous lifestyle. And it's something really neat. It's just, it's just cool that way. Actually, I think I remember seeing an old episode of Magnum P.I., where like Magnum had a flashback to when his, his dad died and he, I think he was at like a military funeral and uh, he was wearing his dad's Rolex but it was way too big for him like this as a kid and he was crying or whatever. <laughs> and maybe that was the episode where like an airplane fell on him and he was on a mountaintop or something. I don't know. But um, it's, just, it's just cool. It's something that reflects that you know, lifestyle and going way back when and something that you can pass down generations, which is kind of an old world European way of looking at it, aristocratic. Americans aren't into that. They're kind of into rampant consumerism and throwing things away. But it's just nice in life 
to not be that way. It's nice to have something or be in a house or in a life where it's gonna last generations and hopefully mean something to you, even if that's just symbolic. So for me and for my Rolex, it may be the only one I ever have. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'd collect them. Maybe someday it'd be cool to have a Daytona, but I don't know when I'm gonna be able to afford that <laughs> or be in a race where I might win one or something. But um, it's, uh, it's just a companion and it's symbolic and it's something that's neat. Uh, so I did this video not for me uh, because I'd rather not even say anything about it because frankly when I go in some places I'll turn it around because I realize that people just think it's a status symbol and that's not why I'm into it. But there's young guys out there who care and they're into that sort of thing and I don't think anybody's going to tell them the real deal about that or at least what it means to me. So if you go to a race or a vintage race and you see a lot of guys wearing things like that, it's kind of suits the lifestyle and it's pretty neat. But uh, the other bummer is, you know, used car salesmen that think they're cool and flashy will go buy a Submariner and still think it's the 1980s and be all flashy with their yellow gold, even though they've never done anything cool in their entire life. And that's a real drag. But, um, you know, and that's just it. So for all you young guys out there that are into watches, think it's pretty cool. Uh, if you ever want to get a stainless Rolex like this, then get it because you got a really active lifestyle and you want a companion for the rest of your life um, if you can. And um, if you can you know, buy used, and uh, don't get blinded by being a crazy collector or something like that. They're all great watches. <laughs> all right, guys, so that's it for today. I hope you will like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.